In this video I'm going to show the assembly and hopefully operation of the RAM disk board for the Briel Altair 8800. Uh, this is an expansion board that goes on the Altair 8800 that provides uh, some additional RAM and provides uh, emulated floppy disk drives using battery backed up memory. Uh, the main purpose is to allow you to run the CPM operating system. So I've just laid out the parts in the kit version. It's uh, reasonably small. There's a circuit board, number of components, ICs and sockets, and a uh, holder for the three uh, batteries that uh, are used for backing up the memory. Uh, so it doesn't come with the uh, necessary three rechargeable batteries that uh, you need to purchase those separately. It's supposed to work with NICADs or nickel metal hydride. So I uh, went to the local dollar store and noticed that they had nickel metal hydride batteries, uh, $2 for two batteries. So I'm going to give these a try and hopefully they will do the job. So next up I'm going to heat up my soldering iron and start some of the assembly of the board following the instructions in the manual. Well, construction's proceeding well. I've now soldered in the four resistors, two diodes, crystal, and the smaller IC sockets. I noticed one discrepancy in the parts. Uh, there was supposed to be a 3.3K resistor, but it came with a 1K ohm resistor. So I'm going to assume that that was just an error in the parts supplied in the kit and put in a 3.3K from my own uh, parts inventory. So we'll move on now with the larger IC sockets and the remaining components, uh, mostly just the capacitors, connectors, and battery pack. I've now soldered all the components, including the large IC sockets and capacitors and the connectors, and finally the battery pack. If you're a beginner to assembling things like this, the, you may find the instructions a little terse. Uh, they say, for example, to install the capacitors and they don't mention exactly the locations. If you're familiar with electronics, you can probably figure out that these smaller capacitors go across the crystal and the other 0.1 microfarads are bypass capacitors across each IC. Or you can probably glean it by looking carefully at the photograph, but some of these things could trip you up if you weren't particularly experienced with uh, assembling kits like this. I've now installed the ICs into the sockets and as is usual you need to bend the pins a little bit on the ICs to get them to fit the sockets. Put the batteries in the battery holder and there's a little bit of double sided tape that you need to put on the bottom to make sure that the bottom of this board doesn't get shorted by touching some of the capacitors underneath on the main board. So we're now ready to install the expansion board into the main Altair 8800 board. The RAM disk board installs on top of the main board using a connector and a couple of standoffs. So we've got it installed and ready to give it the first power up test. I've got the case all put together and we're now going to power the system up and start testing the RAM card. I should mention that I recently upgraded the firmware to the latest uh, version 5.2 of both the terminal and the CPU. So there's a number of nice features in 5.2, um, one of which is faster communication between the two processors, so the downloading speed is faster. Now one of the features of the RAM card is it has an additional 32K of RAM, bringing the total up to 64K. So just to confirm that's working, I'm going to load basic and we'll see how much memory we've got available to make sure that we've got the full 64K. So I'll load basic. And we've got just over 59K free, so that's a good sign that we do have uh, 64K and not 32K. Now the main reason for using the SRAM disk card is to run the CPM operating system, uh, which it was a much more sophisticated operating system than the Altair ran by default. 
kind of a DOS-like environment as you'll see. So there's a number of steps involved in getting that up and running. The first is to take some of the pre-made disk images that come on the CD-ROM uh, and copy them to the SD card. So I've done that. The second step is to transfer the disk image or images that you want into the RAM disk card. And that's done by booting the system up with address switch 10 and the protect and aux switch is raised and then in stop mode lifting the step switch and we now get some options so we can transfer files between the SD card and the RAM disk card. So what I'm going to do is transfer a disk image from the SD card into the RAM disk. So I want to go from the SD card. Now we have two drives A and B. I'm going to copy a CPM image to drive A. In the file name hit Control Alt D to get directory listing. In this case I want to use a image called CPM2212.disk which is the uh, the newer version of CPM2 that I want to install here. So I'll select that and this takes a couple of minutes to run to do the transfer. Now we have two drives. Typically you'll want to copy something to the SEPCAN drive as well. Um, so I've, I'll do that um, as well outside of this video and show some of the uh, applications that we can run. Now that's completed, the next step is to boot the special uh, CPM loader, which is a binary that we can load normally. So we'll go to the usual uh, boot mode with the AUX and A11 keys switches raised and reset the system. So now we want to run the bootloader which is called bootload.bin. Now a nice feature of this new firmware if we hold down the shift key when we hit enter it will remember this bootloader program and remember it as a automatic loader so that with a different switch setting we can automatically load this bootloader. So that allows automatically booting into CPM uh, from power on once we've done that. So I'll hit enter. The bootloader is a little different in that the start address is FF00. Um, it's showing that by default because it remembered that from the past, the first time you need to specify that. And so it loads. We switch to run. And we're now in CPM. So we can see we're running um, CPM version 2.2 with uh, the Altair BIOS with two drives. So this is a very uh, DOS-like environment. It's really a precursor to MS-DOS. It has a number of built-in commands as well as commands that are on the disk. So right now we're on drive A. We can get a directory listing. There's a few files on here that came with CPM. We can specify B colon to go to drive B and look at some additional files on there. In this case a few games. So there's two drives here, each of which have a little over uh, half a megabyte of storage, which is a reasonable amount for CPM. And um, it's pretty typical of systems of that time that you'd have two drives. Um, typically, they'd actually be floppy drives. Now, a nice feature that's been implemented here on the uh, the Brielle Alter 8800 is some utilities that allow you to copy files between the SD card and the RAM disk from within CPM. So you see here are these utilities tread, tdelete, tdir, um, tdiskdir. These allow you to look at the SD card from CPM. So for example, tdir 
will allow us to see files on the SD card and T-Read will allow us to copy files from the SD card to the RAM disk and T-Write will do the reverse. So these are actually quite, quite user-friendly commands. The latest version has some help options and there's a number of options for these commands so these are very useful and this would be typically the way you can get new files onto the CPM system. So as a final example of CPM, uh, I'll show a game here. This is a, uh, uh, a version of the uh, classic Star Trek game that I believe was, is written in uh, compiled basic for CPM, so we'll fire that up. This seems to be one of the nicer implementations of Star Trek. So you may be familiar with this game. Uh, it's a, a Star Trek based game where you move around the galaxy on the Enterprise uh, attacking the Klingons using your um, your weapons, the phasers and photon torpedoes and try and avoid being shot by the Klingons who fight back. And you've got uh, star bases where you can refuel and repair. Uh, you need to put your shields up and down and uh, navigate through different quadrants of the galaxy. So this is really a classic game that started out on mainframe computers and eventually was ported to some of the early um, microcomputers uh, like this one. And this is a particularly nice version with uh, color and some kind of ASCII art graphics. So that was a quick overview of some of the things that you can do with the CPM operating system. There's a huge amount of software out there from the uh, CPM days that's still available on the internet. Many different games, software development tools, uh, word processors, spreadsheets, uh, things like the uh, WordStar, one of the original word processors. Um, most of the software is now available and, and free to download. Uh, there's also various versions of CPM. So you can really have a lot of fun with this old software, there's a lot of documentation, some of which came on the CD-ROM with the Alterator 800, uh, some is on the internet. There's also older books such as this one that you may be able to find that cover CPM concepts and programming and so on. So I, I hope to do a future part of this video series and maybe cover some of the more advanced features like uh, running WordStar, uh, running one of the free C compilers and developing uh, simple programs for CPM. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for possible new installments.